Uh, I think I overheard as I was uh, coming back in here, uh, there were some some questions around source ordering, push and pulling and, and all that. So we're gonna talk about it here. So it's pretty cool. Um, source ordering, it's a little tricky to kind of wrap your head around. It's it's just a little bit unconventional. So you're like pushing and pulling and manipulating rows. Uh, uh, so it's a little, you know, it, it may take a couple of times to read the docs and make sure that you're, you're doing it correctly, but uh, it's really useful, um, especially for responsive layouts. Uh, it really allows you to have uh, grid columns that are in uh, one order on mobile uh, and in another order on a larger screen. Um, there's a client that we had, uh, I, I don't know, a few a few months ago. It was like, okay, so responsive design, I, I think I'm getting this. So it's just the thing on the left goes on top of the thing on the right. And we're like, uh, kind of. Like, it's not always that way. And there are cases that you don't want it to be that way. And we'll take a look at an example of that. Um, but this lets you get full control over, um, you know, styling and, and getting that, that up and running there. So... Um, this is what that kind of looks like if you want to source order here. So kind of thinking about this in columns, we have our column on the left and then our other column on the right, probably like a, I don't know, four and eight. Uh, and then, you know, maybe we want this to rest underneath uh, this on mobile. Typically, we have like if, if we just shrink it, uh, the natural um Kind of effect and, and response for that is this section just stacking on, on top and, and kind of moving below. Um, so what we want to do with source ordering, if we take a look at this, uh, we have our large nine and large three. Sorry, it's off off by one there as well. Uh, but what we can do is use these these clash classes here. So you can add a class uh, large push three, uh, which which pushes columns over from the left. Um, and kind of moves it in there. So that's one way to, to move that. Um, or uh, you can do large pull nine. Uh, so again, when you're thinking about source ordering, uh, you always want it to add up to the number of columns in your row. So we recommend 12 out of the box. Foundation uh, is a 12 column grid. Uh, of course, you could download it and do, you know, with the customizer or within SAS. Uh, you could, you know, set the, the column count to 24, uh, but basically the, the rule of thumb here is to really make sure that uh, this adds up to the full 12 uh, or, or whatever number you're using there. Uh, you get some funky uh, results if you don't quite uh, hit that, um, but, you know, just so that you're aware, you really want to make sure that, you know, you can pull and push those as is. So this is what the syntax would look like. You know, pretty straightforward. We do have our our row and then our columns there. So we have two columns within this row, uh, and then we we want some content in there. So let's say in this particular layout, and this is uh, a pretty common pattern that we see here. We have our main content on the right and then our sidebar on the left. Uh, but maybe we want that sidebar to get tucked underneath all the content. Uh, really, it's not that important from a design perspective. Um, you know, maybe you, you guys have uh, you know, been working with a client and they want the sidebar and, and navigation to really, um, since it is secondary content, you know, follow that, that main content down there. Um, so what we can do is use a little bit of that pull and push uh, classes there. So again, these should always add up to the, um, you know, 12 column count there. But basically we just switch those columns for large and up. Uh, so again, large push three here. Uh, and then large pull nine there. So taking a look at code pin, this is where uh, things start to really make sense, at least for me, um, visual visual learner here. So taking a look at that, um, <clears throat> the the markup, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, looks like, uh, you know, pretty simple here. We have our title, uh, and then we have a row, which kind of uh, encompasses this area over here. Uh, you can see immediately, we have the main content first, uh, which looks a little bit different than what we would expect uh, from a typical um, you know, grid uh, behavior there. So we have our main content, we have our uh, lorem ipsum there. Uh, one quick tip uh, as far as prototyping, um, especially in CodePen, we like you know, tweaking around in CodePen there. If you um, type P uh, and hit tab, you get your paragraph tag right there. 
Uh, so it is that, that kind of Emmet or autocomplete there. Uh, but what's cool, if you guys don't know, if you type in lorem and hit tab, you get a paragraph immediately there. So, um, you know, just some quick tips to uh, start prototyping a little bit faster. Most IDEs, um, you know, Sublime, Atom, whatever you guys are, are using, uh, there's plugins that, that have that there. But, you know, you can do that in, in CodePen uh, itself there. But, yeah, taking a look at that, we do have all of our content there. Um, and then we have our, our next, you know, row below. And, again, we pull... Uh, this row over eight, uh, and it takes up four, so we know that it's it's taking up that that full uh, space there. So when we shrink down this content, the sidebar then just stacks on the bottom. Really, really awesome. So it was actually a little bit tricky to uh, do within uh, the foundation framework. Uh, it's actually the the one kind of cool cool thing about tables that are nice. Um, yeah, it's, you know, tables have this kind of directional left to right attribute that you can use, uh, but it's actually a little bit tricky to do it with floats, uh, a lot of clearing and, and some of that as well. Uh, but pretty simple to, uh, pull that, pull that in there. So, yeah. All right. Taking a look at buttons. Buttons really are a core interactive element of the web. Uh, it's really hard to go to a website uh, nowadays without a button visible anywhere. Uh, sure, you can get you know text links uh, here and there. There may be some super minimal websites that have that, uh, but buttons really are that core primary call to action. Um, so you guys will probably be using that quite a bit uh, and really working with that uh, there. So. Uh, so buttons, yeah, the core interactive elements of the web, uh, again, they come in many sizes, colors, and styles, uh, you know, buttons are, are buttons, but, you know, there's a lot of different variations within buttons, uh, that you can do. So in foundation, we have, uh, the ability to add the class of, uh, button to any anchor tag, any button, uh, tag or any input type submit. So those form, uh, buttons there as well. Um, you just add that one class and it defaults to our <clears throat> medium button uh, there. So there's a ton of different variations within buttons. Uh, clients can get a little bit picky about you know, buttons, of course. Uh, but this is kind of what you know, that looks like here. You just have your basic tags, your class button, and it'll look like a button. So within the button, uh, you know, tag here, and then the input there as well. So yeah, the basic button can, of course, be created with pretty minimal markup, as you saw earlier. Um, you know, they can be used for many purposes, and it's really important to use the right tag. So this was something that we really focused on uh, with the advent of Foundation 6 was uh, semantic markup. Uh, so we took some extra care and, and really understood of, uh, you know, what the difference is between, you know, again, looking at an anchor tag, a button, and an input. There's different times um, when you use that, and for... Um, you know, screen readers, um, it reads these things much differently. Um, it interprets the page a little bit differently uh, between the anchor tag buttons and inputs there. <clears throat> so the rule of thumb here is use an anchor tag if uh, your button or your anchor is linking to another page uh, or a link uh, to an anchor within the page. So these are, um, you know, much more navigational elements there. Um, that's, that's a rule of thumb, uh, you know, moving into this and kind of researching, I didn't quite know that that was explicitly what anchors were for. I thought you could use it for, you know, any type of element there. But um, again, the button tag uh, should only be used uh, if you want to write semantically there, um, if the button performs an action that changes something on the current page. So uh, if it maybe, you know, opens a modal or changes or toggles, uh, you know, so, some sort of, you know, colors or changes within there. Uh, it just doesn't take you out to another page or move you to a different part within the page. So uh, button elements almost always require JavaScript uh, to really function correctly and semantically. Um, since this is uh, web development, you, of course, can use these interchangeably uh, without really knowing. But, you know, that's that's... Uh, best practices there. We definitely encourage. It's, it's pretty simple to do, so um, definitely recommend that. So as we're taking a look at this, um, 
Oh, and also the input uh, button, you know, input uh, class button. That's just within forms. So we're taking a look at examples. Uh, these will kind of be looking at anchor tags. They're probably more common on you know, normal websites. Uh, web apps probably have a little bit more buttons there. Um, but for um, all these examples, we're going to take a look at uh, you know, the classes added to uh, those anchor tags there. So we have uh, our button classes, uh, and we have kind of some different options of buttons. So we have different sizes that uh, buttons can be, different colors that they can be, um, different styles here. So if there are a hollow button, uh, that was pretty popular for a while. It still you know, is a popular style for an app or for a button. Um, and then disabled. So maybe there's, you know, in effect, the, the user needs to um, do a certain action before the button is enabled. Uh, we have a disabled class as well. Um, and each of these classes, again, we talked a little bit about how we write CSS in our previous hour. Uh, these are modifiers there. So you write your button class, and then you can you know, mix and match any of these modifiers. Uh, so taking a look at the sizes, uh, the default button is just that medium button. Um, I believe we do have a medium class there, but it just never gets used. It's just your standard button. Um, and then we kind of use that as a baseline from there. So we're going to get a, a super tiny button, a pretty small button, large, you know, expanded, which means it just expands out to whatever its parent container is. Uh, great for using the grid. Uh, and then we can add those colors there too. So secondary colors, whatever you define in your uh, settings file, uh, by default, it's kind of a gray. Um, success, probably a green of some sort. Alerts would probably be more of a, a red. Uh, and then warning would probably be this orange color there. Hollow classes really are just, um, you know, a hollow button just has a border with some text in there. Um, and then we have our disabled uh, classes as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this. So yeah, this is what those uh, you know buttons look like. By default, we have you know our button. We have um, you know, just a basic button. We have a nice little hover effect there. Uh, we have some of our sizing buttons. So this one's really tiny. Um, taking a look at that, we have our tiny class added. Um, and it just takes up by default uh, the amount of you know, the size of the text that it has. So if we want to make this you know, a little bit longer, a bit longer, save it. You can see it just takes that amount of space there. You can define widths to those if you really want. Probably not uh, that flexible uh, if you're designing a system there. Uh, but there's different options uh, such as, you know, expanded. I always get this, this syntax mixed up here. Um, expanded, yep. Uh, so if we write expanded, click save, you can see it. this button uh, expands to the full width of its container. So this is really great if you want kind of that, that responsive uh, you know, effect there. If we want to create like a maybe small eight, let's go ahead and uh, tuck that down there, move that column. You can see that you know we have our our small eight, and then we have a small four. Let's go ahead and use that lorem ipsum trick there. Um, you can see, you know, with the small eight, and small four, it just is kind of that flex button. So pretty powerful. Uh, the expanded button is pretty awesome. But as far as ex the sizes, you know, of course you can add that to this button here. So maybe we want a tiny expanded. Uh, so it shrinks down that padding, uh, the font there a lot. Uh, of course, we go large, um, and you know it's mix and match. Maybe we do want to take some of these colorings here, um, so we can add things like um, I don't know warning. Oh, not in the right spot there. Just a second there. Looks like we may have lost audio for a second. Um, making sure that you guys can can hear. I'm gonna check out the chat room here. It says most people can hear. Okay. 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 Again, yeah. Just you know, uh, shoot me a text. Okay. Cool. That's good. Um, awesome. So uh, you can hear the whispers too. Yes. <laughs> 
Uh, that was Natalie there uh, coming to uh, notify me that maybe we lost audio for a second. Okay, so uh, changing the text color, that was, that was a question, like black or red. Uh, the examples were uh, the ones with white text. So uh, out of the box, that's a great question. Uh,